yeah. I can't believe the time's already here. It's uh, November and time for first start of the season. So I know we're all excited to kind of get going. Um, you know, we've had a had a summer tour in August and got got some really good time with the girls down there, both just um, developing chemistry and then just having some good games, came back, and just been really in the grind, just like everybody else, the last four or five weeks, and just ready to play somebody else. And we're off to a to uh, really being tested early, but that's okay. You know, we're a veteran team, and I think the girls are excited about playing some that caliber of team. And so we're just going to grind it out and really just prepare these next couple of days before we get started on Friday. It's uh, it's not uncommon for a coach to come to one of these things with seniors at her side. The fact that you have Dominique and Jocelyn kind of reflect their importance to the program and their roles in the program. For sure. You know, Aliyah and Lauren went down with me to ACC Media Day, but we have a lot of talent on this team and obviously the sophomore class and these two on both sides of me were a, a huge um, contributing factor to our success last year and kind of the building, the platform they always talk about and the foundation. So they're going to be a, a major part moving forward these next three years. And um, so, yes, it's no surprise that they are sitting here because they they need to speak about this season for sure. To kind of build on that, Joss, only a sophomore, but you're a team captain. What does that mean to you? Um, I think it means a lot to me. Um, I've definitely um, – been willing to take on this leadership role from last year. I, I never believe like seniority or seniors are the only ones to have a voice. And I think as a team, we encourage everyone to have a say in, you know, it's about improving as a team. So if you have something to say that's going to help us improve, then say it. And I'm um, so grateful that the girls see me as a captain. And um, I'm just hoping that I can do a good job leading the team this year. Obviously a big year for you last season. What did you want to improve on this off season? Yeah, um, there's a lot I wanted to improve on. I'm never quite satisfied, um, but definitely my ball handling skills, um, extending my range and becoming a more consistent shooter. So those were probably the three biggest things on the court and then always just my leadership skills and um, being a good teammate. So. And Dom, same for you. Uh, how, how can you put together a few more game winning shots this season? I'm sorry, what did you say? How, how did you want to build on what you did last season? Um, I just want to be more consistent, you know, um, start moving into a leadership role, um, filling in for a point guard because, um, you know, we lost Brianna Mason. But, um, you know, just be consistent on the floor and do what I can to help the team. This is kind of an odd question, but uh, with the – I don't know that – I've seen any of your quotes on the new athletic director. And what, what does that mean for women's basketball here? Oh, I think it's a, a great hire. You know, two of my assistants worked under her. Uh, one, Lakeisha Fred, as an assistant coach. She was her assistant coach when, when she was playing at Georgia. And then obviously um, under her leadership when she was administrator there and Catherine Graham for a little bit as well. So they know her very well. And um they love her to death they think she's just absolutely quality people and very good at her job and um i have other people in the business that know her well uh, as uh, too and so they've no, i've heard nothing but wonderful things about her nothing but wonderful things so i'm looking forward to it and just want to help her you know transition in any way we can um, because i know it's a lot on her plate right now with kind of being in the middle of what she's doing down there transitioning here has a family all those so Again, I think everybody's excited for her, and, and I think everybody just wants to reach out and help her settle in. This time last year, you fielded questions about Felicia, and she was kind of a curiosity being that tall and that new to the game. Where is she today as opposed to 12 months ago? Um, she put on 15 pounds of muscle. So I think a lot with Fee last year was just the newness of playing in this type of environment. You know, she's a late bloomer, so she's not been playing the game that long, um, like the two beside me. Um, obviously, the 6'9 is a little bit of an anomaly. But I think with the muscle and the what the trainers and strength and condition coaches have been able to do, I think it's just find kind of like a bigger base for her and not be getting bumped off the lane so easily. She's definitely improved in terms of understanding, like, how to post up, how we wanted to post up. Obviously, there's going to be growth for the next three years with her, um, but she is a presence for us. And anytime she's on the floor, it seems like we will look to her all the time. So I think she'll really attract a lot of, obviously, defense for us, and it might give our guards better shots this year. So um, she's working hard, and she runs the floor. I think one of the biggest things is this year she runs the floor really well. 
She's always been a decent rebound force. The defense at the end of the floor is still her sweet spot, still block shots every day in practice. And I think she just get more comfortable in the offense end of the floor. For me, it's still about just finishing better and being confident and continue to get stronger. Um, but again, there's been a lot of growth in her. Kind of following up on what Ron was asking you guys, but for both Jocelyn and Dominic, just we hear all the time that year one to year two is where players often make that big leap. How different is it for both of you guys now that you have that one year under your belt and you kind of have an idea of how this all works? Um, I'll just say like, you don't really have the excuse that you're a freshman anymore. You know, you know what to expect when you go on the floor um, and you have to bring it every game. You have more responsibility to the team being a second year. Um, so yeah, I think that's the biggest change for me. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think um, in terms of our individual games, um, it's been a little bit challenging for me. I've been out for most a good majority of the preseason, so I haven't quite seen you know the big leap in my game. Um, but I think as a team, we definitely have a better mentality. Um, we're an older team. We lost one senior. We gained some. Um, well, we have four seniors this year. So it's just a mentality knowing like, okay, for a lot of us, this is our last go around. Um, and after our season last year, we just, we're more mature. We understand what we need to do. And now it's just a matter of doing what we need to do to get it done. Yeah, I think um, anytime, I always said anytime freshmen play a lot of minutes, um, they're just such better sophomores, juniors, and seniors moving forward. And you can tell, I mean, both Nikki and Joss, obviously just what they were able to do is with, especially Nikki, like the strength and the conditioning and, and just being able to go longer in practice, longer in games. I mean, just that how her body has matured, I think has played into uh, her being able to just withstand, you know, contact and just play longer. Um, but again, they're just a maturity. I mean, I think they're both mature in their games to begin with, and I know they just want to improve, but I, I just think they can handle more. You know, they just, they can handle more. I think mentally they grow, I, physically they grow. I think they, they, they are both starting to want more responsibility, and that's always a great thing for a coach. Um, so I just think the more they're willing to take on, the more I think coaches are, are about to give them, or we're about to give them. And so I think, um, Besides what they said, I think that's just an added bonus. The uh, fourth member of that second year class, Lisa, what have you seen from her this preseason and how far has she come over the past year? Me or yeah, oh, me. You know, Lisa's role for us, and I always wanted to, to improve and again, whatever she can handle. But for us, she was always that spark that came off the bench, got all the hustle plays, kept balls alive, rebounded the basketball well, played good defense. So. She did that as a first year. I wanted to continue to do that and hopefully be able to give us a little bit more scoring, you know? So, uh, again, I'm never going to pigeonhole a, a player into a, a box and say she can only do this. She's really been working on her shot with Tim, and, um, and I think she's definitely, definitely more comfortable. You know, is she going to put up 10, 12 points a game this year? I don't know. But I, don't, I want her growth to be in that area, but I want her to be better in the things that she was really good at, and that's those things I mentioned, her hustle, her defense, and her rebounding, and keeping balls alive. What did you learn from the two scrimmages? How helpful uh, were they? Uh, close scrimmages are always good. Um, I think because, you, for me, I like looking at different lineups. I like being able to stop play and talking about things. I mean, I think there's a lot of really good things about it. Obviously, we're, we weren't at full strength in those scrimmages, but I think they just give you a look at like where you are and what you need to do. And for us this year, we were 10th in the country in field goal percentage defense. We want to be that and or better. Um, we need to improve our rebounding numbers even more. We need to finish plays better to get us a couple more points scoring. And I think at times we can play faster because I think Dom and JB and uh, Bree are willing to push the ball a little bit more. Dom, with uh, Brianna gone, you move more into that primary ball handling role. What are your thoughts on moving into that and how have you worked to kind of improve in that role? Um, you know, I've just been really working with the coaches. Um, they've been guiding me through it because usually I'm just a combo guard. I come off the wing. Um, but. It's just a mental change and knowing that I have to lead on the court. I have to be the connection between the team and the coaches. Um, but I feel like I'm transitioning into the position well. Um, and I have JB beside me to help me with that. So um, I'm pretty confident in where I am in the point guard role right now. And for Coach and Joss, what are your thoughts on opening the season at Mississippi State? 
Um, personally, I'm very excited about it. I think the team is as well, and the coaches is something that we've been anticipating for. Well, we've been talking about it for a few months, it seems. Um, but, you know, with the context, they upset UConn last year, and just coming into a new season, I think expectations are higher for us. So we're excited to start the season, and we think um, it'll be a good game. You know, one of the reasons why I felt we were held out of the tournament is that people kept talking about just having a couple more big hitters on a non-conference schedule for RPI purposes. So we addressed that, and I think this is a great opportunity for a little bit more of a veteran team to go into an environment early, um, being in a double header, playing a late game, and just being in that type of environment. Um, I think it's going to be a win-win. You know, I just we need that kind of exposure. We're at the point where we need those type of games early to um, just see where we are, you know? So I'm looking forward to it. Looks like it could be a pretty physical contest as well. Do you like that aspect, being a physical game in your first game of the season? Yeah, I talked to the girls. I said, you know, the theme with Mississippi State is they're going to each – every single person that walks on the floor is going to give you one early. Like, they got five to give, and all 13 of them are going to give you one, and they're going to give you a hard one, and they're going to make sure that you know that you're at Mississippi State. So – we have to prepare this week, and we have been just the physicality of the game for us. We have to own that. You know, we, we just have to go in and own that, and we have to own that in practice because it's really hard not to do it in practice and all of a sudden expect to walk in the game. So we've been trying to just talk to them, and we have practice guys that come every day, and I think they really beat up, especially on our post players. I think they really beat up, beat up our post players, which has been really good for us. So um, it's just it's it's the theme of basketball. You know, who, who cares how the refs call it? You'll adjust, but you got to be ready to go in there and get hit. When you had maybe a month to sit back and think about it, what did you what did, what were your final thoughts on last season? Obviously, you didn't get the NCAA bid, but you won 20 games. Uh, positive, uh, mixed. How would you? You know, it's two of my six seasons. We were the last first team out of the NCAA tournament. My first year, it happened the exact same way. And so after thinking about it, really what it ended up being is we have to do whatever we need to do to get off the bubble because we cannot continuously leave this in a committee's hands to determine if, um, if that's how we're going to get into a tournament. And I think increasing the schedule and obviously I was, I was pleased, you know, I, I I was pleased where we were picked based off of what we've done, and I think we have to we have th some things to prove. But again, for me, it's just day to day. Every day, are we getting better? You know, every day, I'm not worried about who we're playing in three weeks. Like every day, are we getting better? And I think when we had that mentality last year, if we could just do the, some of the things that I was talking about, finish, you know, just finish a few more layups or finish ninth in the country in field goal percentage defense, whatever, play a little bit faster. I mean, we're not that far off, and we have basically the same team, but we're going to have to absorb a lot of the good that Bree brought to this team. She was four-year starter, veteran, leadership. We're going to have to absorb that, and everybody's going to have to do a little bit more. So our, our goal is to get off of that bubble and not have it be somebody else's decision if we're in the tournament or not. The, uh, the, the knee injuries have really made it hard for Monet in her career here. She's your only third year this year. Is she at a point where you think she can – consistently produce or is the knee still an issue no she's been pretty good I mean I, I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent but she's been she's been solid you know she's been every, she hasn't missed a practice she's gone full every drill I think she just has to make sure she's doing everything she can prior to practice and after practice to make sure it stays that way but it like you said it's her first healthy year and um, she's never gone through a preseason so she went through a preseason she went through a summer and I think, you know, just her versatility at 6'3 and being able to swing her inside and out will definitely be beneficial to us. So I, I, I am looking for her to, to really kind of get some tread this year. I know Amon Dean, I may be mispronouncing Amon that, Dean. was having a really good preseason and had impressed a lot of people. How, how big a setback is that injury for the team? Yeah. You know, it's it's always hard. You, you don't get them every year, and then you get them. And, you know, I, the, the hard part for Amadine is she walked off the plane and start playing in this environment. You know, she didn't have a summer to really train under people that could have put weight on her. She's very thin, but she's incredibly quick, athletic, defensive-minded. She played on the, you know, on the kind of all those French under national teams. So she's been playing against women for many years. So I felt like her transition coming in was very smooth. I mean, she didn't miss a beat, and um, I thought she would have, you know, she's a long, long guard, and she would have really helped us. You know, the hard part is to watch somebody come from Europe and they're coming to play basketball 
just it just taken away from like that and it happens to a lot of people so it was really hard on her for a couple days up to a week because obviously it's the reason why she came here but she's a great teammate I mean you can these guys will vouch for that she's an unbelievable teammate she'll be a great leader for us she understands that she gets the year back and she's got five and all those good things but I, I think she's still it's hard for her like any player is to sit there and watch practice and know that you're not going to be a part of it you know but every team deals with it we're not you know we're not the only ones <coughs> Along those same lines, Jocelyn Menson missing time this preseason. Good to go for uh, for Friday, or what's what's the latest there? I think we're day to day. Jocelyn will practice today, um, so we've been integrating inter integrating her along the way, and we just got to see how these next couple of days go. How do you feel about that? I mean, I'm excited. Hopefully, I'll be able to play. Um, but for me, it's more so about long term and making sure that I'm healthy, and you know, my ankle will be healthy and be able to sustain the duration of the season. So. And then just uh, obviously Bree Tinsley, being a local girl, obviously playing at Stab, how has she kind of fit in and acquitted herself early on in these preseason practices and stuff? I, I mean, I think obviously the transition of college is a little bit easier when you're at home, you know, so her familiar surroundings and all of those things. Um, and she's coming along. I mean, she had some. She had a bright spot, a couple bright spots in the scrimmages. And I think that for her, it's a learning curve. You know, she's coming in in a very significant position. It's not as though she's coming in as the, you know, fourth wing. And you know, she's got to come in and be vocal and lead a team when she's in there. So it's it's always harder for a point guard to do that. But I think with Nikki and and JB, and she can kind of learn from them. It's not all on her plate. It can give her a minute to kind of catch her breath, but I definitely she's progressing. I mean, no doubt every day you see a little bit more. So she'll definitely contribute. I mean, she'll definitely help us because Nikki's got to get off the ball and play on the wing, and Bree's going to have to handle some of that responsibility. It's just going to be, like I said, I think it's more of a shared experience than just Brianna Mason playing 35 minutes a game at that spot. You don't seem under much job pressure or anything. Have you have you ever felt that way here? I don't, you know, I, I think everybody's probably different in, in how they handle that. But for me, it's just, I show up every day. I love my job, love the girls, do my best. Um, I have a great staff. Like we, I just feel like we turned the corner last year. And I think there's just so much to build on because of that. And I always tell, I mean, I, I preach, you know, I, I need to practice what I preach and that is control the controllables, you know? And so that's what I do. And um, and like I said, I think we can do some really good things here and I'm just excited for the girls this year. And I don't look too much, I don't look too far ahead in my life, you know, never have, never will. So.